Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to my course uh, aspects of biochemical engineering. Now I was discussing about the kinetics of substrate utilization, product formation, biomass uh, production uh, using microorganism. So we discussed the theory part as well as we discussed several problems and coming to lectures also we will try to solve to more solve problems because uh, what I believe that if we can solve more problem the conception of the on the microbial process will be more. How to analyze the chemostat, how to analyze the plug flow reactor, how to analyze the fed batch process. Now, uh, so today this uh, whatever lecture we, we, have, we have framed that uh, we will try to go much details of this particular uh, microbial fermentation process. The first problem that I want to discuss the if you look at this problem this is a generalized form of the logistic equation is proposed by Konak such, such as this is the equation. The, so, we know if we if we can remember the life cycle. So, it is like this time with respect to viable cells am I right viable cells. Now, these viable cells we can express in terms of n. So, it is like this, it is going, then stationary, then coming back. So, here, here we consider this is we consider in all uh, in infinity or in uh, then infinity means the cell mass constant number of cell mass at the stationary phase. So, this is the in uh, infinity is the stationary phase population, a b is the constant, this a and b are the constant, and n is the cell mass concentration at any time t. Now, what we shall have to do show that the maximum growth rate occurred when then n by n all infinity equal to a by a plus b and that its value is given by this equation. So, if you put these values in this equation that we can find out the maximum rate of that cell mass production that should be equal to k into n infinity a plus b a to the power a b to the power b divided by a plus b to the power a plus b. So, this is very interesting problem. Now, now to solve this problem what I want to tell that uh, we know that d n by d t what is d n by d t rate of cell mass formation this is with respect to time. Now, what will happen this will keep on increasing with respect to time then will decrease. Now, this we shall have to monitor. This is this is what is this point? This point is d n by d t, this should be maximum. So, th this is also t max. So, at t max we will get the rate of rate of cell mass uh, formation is maximum when it will occur when d 2 n by d t 2 this should be equal to 0, because it increases then it attain the plateau. When it attain the plateau, then it will be maximum and this is possible when d 2 by uh, d 2 n by d t 2 equal to 0. Now, this is the solution how we try to work out with this problem. If you look at here that uh, this is the problem that has been given. Now, if I take n infinity a plus b in the right hand side the equation will be becoming this. This the uh, equation will get like this and then, <coughs> then if we differentiate with respect to time then uh, with the by differentiation we will get this equation. So, uh, and then after getting this equation then we put this conditions. And uh, when d n by d t equal to max, the d t 2 by d t d t d t n d t 2 n by d t 2, this is some mistake is there, you can correct it, this should be equal to 0. Okay. So, this I can I can I can explain you little bit 
uh, to you that you know that this uh, if you differentiate this uh, that you know that uh, this is in 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 infinite this is constant am i right but this is n is the variables and this is also variable so we differentiate with respect to this two term and when we differentiate with respect to time this will this will be this will come like this now so as uh, now if we put these conditions that d2 uh, d2 uh, n by dt2 equal to 0 then uh, we 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 can we can write this equation in this form then then the equation will be becoming uh, simplified in this form that a into 1 minus n by n infinity equal to b by n by n infinity now when we go further we find we will come across this equation and uh, this equation if we if we solve it if it minus 1 if you take this side then infinity i can write that a, a n by n infinity equal to a plus b that means we can say at t max at t max when uh, d2 d2 t by dn2 is equal to 0 and this is occurred when dn dn by dn dt is maximum this will be this is possible then n in by n infinity equal to a by a plus b this we can we can easily find out now this this thing we can put it in the uh, previous equation that whatever we have this equation we can prove put it uh, this equation that uh, this equation we can put it and if we put that this equation we can we can we can come across will come across this kind of uh, situation and then if you simplify it it will come like this dn by dt maximum equal to k n alpha a plus b a to the power a b to the power b a plus b equal to so so it is very simple problem only the thing is that we shall have to find out that under what condition the rate of cell mass growth will be maximum and rate of cell mass growth will be maximum when d 2 n by d t 2 equal to 0 you know that is because I told you I, I am repeating you again the d n the d t versus t when you plot. So, here is the maximum and here at this particular point d 2 d 2 d 2 by d 2 to n by d t 2 this should be equal to 0 if you differentiate that we can easily find it out if you put this way you will come across this kind of equation this is a very simple problem I hope if you try you can solve it by yourself now uh, another very interesting uh, problem that I want to discuss uh, here that uh, we we know that we 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 we, uh, we uh, come across the part equation what is the part equation part equation deals with uh, the maintenance of the cell all what you call endogenous metabolism of the cells so uh, what is the i told you what is the maintenance of the cells maintenance of the cells means uh, in a solution when you keep the cells you'll t when you see the uh, organism under the microscope you find that organisms are moving from one place to other place and this for the movement of this organism you require some energy and for the uh, some kind of protein formation or some kind of uh, uh, repairing of the ruptured cell we require some kind of energy so that is used for the for the maintenance uh, maintenance uh, considered as the maintenance energy so what i want what part equation basically deals with that they are saying the substrate mostly goes for the cell mass formation but a portion that is used for the growth of the cell maintenance now um, so this equation surely deals with that now when a negative term is included in the cellular kinetics in order to model the endogenous metabolism or the maintenance energy the resulting equation assuming the excess substrate can be written as that is 
Now, this equation we have shown you this is nothing but d s by d t this is overall rate of substrate formation overall this will be minus d s by d t this is for growth plus d a minus d s by d t this is for maintenance of the cells. So, you know this, this equation I, we have shown you that we have this equation is nothing but this. Now, if you divide divide by uh, mu x, then the equation will be can be written as uh, what what will be this? The we can write one by y equal to <coughs> we can write one by y dash plus k e by mu. Am I right? So we can we can write this equation in this form. So where y dash is the growth yield is the gram of, gram of cell produced per gram of substrate consumed for growth. Now, here we sometimes we call it true growth yield, true growth yield. What do you mean by true growth yield? Suppose, uh, we, we already have come across the yield coefficient, yield coefficient means gram of cell produced per gram of substrate consumed. Now, if the, uh, if the substrate used only for the cell mass formation, then we call it true growth yield. Okay. Now, this is so this is the, the true growth and this remain constant for the all organism and K e is the gram of substrate consumed for the maintenance energy per gram of cell. Now, here, here rate of substrate consumption for the maintenance of the cells is what is, is all, always, uh, always proportional to the concentration of the cells because more cell the more will be maintenance energy requirement, less cell, less will be the maintenance energy. So, what we can write that we can write that mi <coughs> minus d s by d t, this is for maintenance, this should be proportional with the cell mass concentration. So, this should be equal to m into x, m what is m? Maintenance coefficient. Now, here this has been substituted by k e. Now, k e is the gram of substrate consumed for maintenance energy per gram of cells. Now, y is the apparent yield, sometimes we call it overall yield coefficient and gram of substrate consumed per gram of cell mass formation. So, so, what we shall have to do? We shall have to show that in a CSTR or chemostat, x and s are related by this. This we shall have to prove that this is related by this and then what is the relation? What is the relation between k e? y dash and d in these circumstances and does the figure of, of uh, below the aspergillus erogenous uh, growing in the glycerol satisfy this model. So, they have uh, they you know that um, that aerobacter aerogenous this is kind of organism that is uh, that when you plot 1 by y versus 1 by d, d is the nothing but the dilution rate they get this kind of correlation and we shall have to prove, we shall have to find out whether it satisfied this part equation, part models. So, this, uh, this we shall have to prove. Let us see how we can solve that. Now, this is the basic equation is given that you know that uh, this is the part equation, we know this is the part equation, this is uh, given in the problem and we know mu equal to d in a in a chemostat under steady state condition under steady state condition and the sterile fit. What is the steady state condition? Let me repeat it again that steady state condition means when the concentration of the different uh, material present in the reactor remain unaltered, remain constant, steady with respect to concentration. When it is changed, this is un unsteady state. As for example, suppose you are putting the substrate in the reactor and if the substrate concentration keep on changing, what do you call it unsteady state. Now, if the substrate concentration remain constant, this does not change with respect to time, then we call it steady state condition. Same thing applicable to the cell mass, same thing applicable to the product formation. So, that is the steady state. So, under steady state content and sterile feed, what does it mean? When the media uh, content does not have any kind of cell mass x 0 equal to 0, then we call it 
so the stereal field. Now, here uh, this equation I can write like this that we, we can we can divide, divide by x then we, we have this if you divide by x then we will be having the equation what mu by y equal to mu by y dash plus k e am I right and then d equal to mu. So, if you replace mu by d so we will get this equation and finally, we will come across this equation. So, what um, uh, the problem that we have this kind of equation then uh, what we know y y is the overall yield coefficient or average, average yield coefficient this is equal to x minus x 0 by s 0 minus s. Now, then what we can write d by d y dash by k e equal to this yield coefficient. So, uh, if we put stereal feed x 0 equal to 0 then x can be written as this is multiplied by s 0. So, this is what a portion of the problem is uh, looking at that uh, given that you have to prove that x equal to y dash a d s 0 minus s divided by d plus k e plus y dash. So, this can be easily proved. Now, question comes what is the relationship between d k e k e and k dash. So, what we can write that <coughs> that what we have the here we, we, we what we have find out y equal to y is the yield coefficient am I right. This is equal to d by d y dash plus k e. Now, y yield coefficient always less than 1. So, we can we can always write this is less than 1 am I right. If this is exactly what is written there. Then if we if we do the reverse then if we bring it at the top then what will happen this will be greater than 1. And then uh, we can have this uh, relationship as uh, have this uh, this uh, relationship that we have. This is uh, that uh, one by e. Th now this we can we can we can do this further simplified that uh, what you can write. Uh, this is uh, d plus k e into y dash by y dash into d. Am I right? This is like this. I can I can write like this. Now, I can I can I can I if I if I multiply both side y dash by d then it can be written as d plus k e y dash it should be greater than y dash d am I right. Then then if you the, then the, then if you be, if you do divide by y dash then what kind of correlation you will you'll get y dash if you if you do that then d now then the same kind of relationship there. So, this kind of correlationship that hold goods we can write that this kind of correlationship between the d k and y dash we can have this kind of correlation or you can divide by y dash then you can you can bring this one term this side and make the things a little bit simpler. So, this is how we can find out the correlation between y dash k e and d. And last part of the problem that we have that you know the, in case of aerobacter aerogenous they found the correlation between y 1 by y by 1 by d. Because this is the equation we have because um, if, you, if you look at we have we had this equation am I right this is the equation we had. Now, if you divide by uh, mu x then what we will get y 1 by y equal to 1 by y dash plus k e into mu okay, am I right. So, this is exactly what we, we wanted to do it here. The we have only this uh, we know under, sta under steady state condition and sterile feed the mu equal to d. So, if you put mu equal to d so we can write here d ok. This is the only the difference. Now, here what are the variables? y is the variables of so overall yield coefficient and d is the variables and k e is the <coughs> maintenance coefficient and the y dash 
is the true growth yield that uh, that is the constant. Am I right? Now, if you if we plot one by y versus one by uh, d, then uh, they they found this is kind of correlation they obtain in the vector vector learning. But as you know that if you look at this equation, what is this equation? The equation equal to y equal to c plus m x and this is a basically a straight line equation. So, it should be a straight line instead of straight line this is a kind of hyperbolic type of equation hybrid the kind of relationship that we have. So, what I what I want to what I want to comment here that this relationship does not satisfy this model because this uh, what is the curve that is showing here that uh, that is not satisfy this model that should be the answer. Okay. Now, let us go to the last uh, that another problem that is also very interesting that uh, that a microbial because uh, in in case of microbial fermentation process we 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 have come across different type of inhibition we have come across the substrate inhibition we have come across the product inhibition I, and I told you you can remember in case of substrate inhibition usually we prefer the fat batch reactor but in case of product inhibition we we prefer the where the plug flow reactor because because why because we have seen that uh, that when you plot 1 minus r a versus c a this kind of plot we have that means so when 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 substrate is degree this is c a 0 am i right and this is your c a this is this might be your c a so, when a uh, substrate concentration decreases that 1 by R a increases that means R a decreases. Now, as the substrate concentration decreases so why the rate of reaction decreases because mainly due to the product inhibition and we have seen that in case of this if you have this kind of correlation we find the area under this curve this uh, what is the area under this curve is tau plug flow reactor am I right. So, this is uh, much less as compared to uh, this is this what is this? This is this is a, the area under this uh, this is uh, the rectangle what you call tau CSTR. So, tau CSTR will much higher as compared to tau plug flow reactor. So, we will we will prefer tau plug flow reactor am I right? So, in case of product inhibition we usually recommend plug flow reactor. Now, this uh, this particular problem deals with some kind of product inhibition and we shall have to develop some kind of equation out of that. Let us see how we can do that. In a microbial species is, is inhibited by the volatile uh, product such as the ethanol. Uh, we know that a high ethanol concentration that you know growth rate of the organism that will be inhibited. Now, growth rate can be increased by the removal of the inhibiting um, the product via continuous evacuation of the vapor, vapor space above the fermenter. So, uh, what we can do that you know that if we applied vacuum, vacuum we know the the boiling point of ethanol is less as compared to that of water am I right. So, if we if we if we applied vacuum that even at the normal temperature that uh, alcohol will be vaporizes out. Now, if alcohol is vaporizes out then that product inhibition uh, due to a certain concentration of ethanol can be overcome. Okay, that is exactly they have mentioned here. Now, for a batch fermentation process following equation there is there that mu equal to mu max s by k s plus s k p plus k p plus b and show that the time codes of the substrate level the overall is this, this s equal to 0.3 p plus cell mass and if if s is like this this kind of correlation if it holds good then that uh, then the equation will be this uh, this equation that equation will be this equation this is uh, um, uh, the d s by d t equal to x 0 plus y x by x x 0 minus x y by x by s mu x and s by k s and this is the equation and k i is the kind of inhibition constant uh, that we shall have to prove. This is the equation, this is the problem that we have. Now, let us see how we can solve it. 
Now, this is the stoichiometry is given. This is this the stoichiometry is like this S equal to substrate equal to the 0.3 p plus uh, x, the x is the cell mass, and this is the equation that is given. And we know ds by dt, how we can write ds by dx and dx by dt. Am I right? And dx by ds is equal to y x by s. That we can always this is called yield coefficient. And uh, and dx by dt we can write mu into x is the rate of growth of the cells. Now here uh, here that uh, so ds uh, ds by dt what we can write that one by uh, one by this uh, this and this this thing I can substitute here that in in place of mu I can substitute into x. This uh, we can get this uh, the two equation we can substitute we can get this equation. Now y x by s is, uh, is uh, x x minus x zero by y zero minus s. Am I right? So x equal to what? X equal to y x by s s zero minus x. Now if we put this in the uh, previous equation, that this equation if we put it. Then uh, what will uh, what we'll get? We'll get? We'll come across this equation: ds by dt equal to uh, one by y x by s mu x s by k s plus s k p plus, and this uh, this x will be substituted by this. I can write like this. Now this this will cancel, and this and and y p by s. I how we can write? This is the gram of product form per gram of substrate consumed. P minus p zero. Uh, by s is zero minus s. So p equal to I can write y p by s is zero minus s into plus p zero. Am I right? And p equal to the stoichiometry is given. If p equal to zero, then we can we can we can write p equal to zero. We can write then p equal to uh, this uh, the point three is zero minus is zero minus s that we can write. The equation. If you if you look at the equation before you, that, what we have done before that you know that this equation. So we have we have we have this s equal to 0.3 p into x. Now this equation we can we can put it here. So uh, and uh, this equation we can write in this form. Then we can put this value in this equation. We will. Finally, we will come across this kind of equation. So uh, we will come across this kind of equation. I hope this is how we can solve this uh, problem. Now, another another very interesting problem is that uh, we have come across the generation time. Am I right? And uh, we also we come across the doubling time of the cell. Now, when we talk about the doubling time, what is doubling time? The time required to double the cell population. What is generation time? The time required for the one cell division. Now here, if you look at this problem, that a new microorganism has been discovered, which as its cell division. Cell division means this is the generation time. It gives the three dotted cell, and then from the growth data below, calculate the mean time between the successive cell division. That means we shall have to find out the generation time. Tg we shall have to find out now. In the doubling time, we have seen what is the equation we have seen? D L n x by x zero equal to mu into t. Am I right? Now, in case of generation, that doubling time, this will be two x zero. Then the equation will be L n two by mu. This will be equal to T d. Am I right? Now, here in case of in case of generation time, what will this is? The this is called this is one cell produces three cells in one division, so equation will be little bit different. Ln three by mu, am I right? Now question comes: How you can determine the value of mu? Now we have we have here in this problem what is at the different time. This is the batch system. We 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 can easily estimate the cell mass concentration. This is the cell mass concentration we have. Now from that. We can uh, now. What is the equation that we have? That uh, ln x by x zero equal to mu into d. Am I right? Now, so by here, uh, if we assume this is mu is constant because in the log phase, 
so uh, so we can we can write that x by x zero we can we can write this value and uh, this value you can plot in the ordinate and t in the uh, abscissa then we will get a straight line and slope obviously slope will give you the value of mu slope will this is exactly what we can find out the value of mu so you can easily find out the value of mu and then as i as i mentioned that in uh, part generation time so what is that equation this is like this ln tg i told you tg equal to ln 3 by mu so we have already estimated the value of mu we put this value of mu and 3 ln 3 is there then we can find out the generation time so this is a very simple uh, way we can we can easily determine the generation time of the cells so in conclusion what i want to tell that uh, in this uh, particular uh, lecture we try to understand how to find out the uh, time at which the maximum rate of growth of the cells take place and uh, and we we have given you some kind of logistic equation that the some kind of equation proposed by konak and from that equation we find out that t max value and and the how the the maximum rate of cell mass formation can be expressed that we try to discuss then we discuss some kind of product inhibition problem and we try to develop some kind of equation and lastly we try to discuss that you know that uh, kind of generation time of the cells thank you very much